Okay, let's go ahead and take a moment and conceptually consider what are confidence intervals actually even doing. Uh, so let's give ourselves just a little bit of a scenario. It'll help us talk, be able to kind of put this in some sort of framework, and then I'll put up some generalities at the end. Okay, so for a confidence interval, let's suppose that we were looking at uh, the true mean miles per gallon uh, of SUVs. Let's say that I want a 95% confidence level. And let's say that when I went and did this, I found that my 95% confidence interval was something like, we'll do 18 to 20 miles per gallon. All right, so let's just suppose that I went and I did my confidence interval, and that's kind of what I found. Okay, let's, <clears throat> let's draw a number line. So suppose this is our number line, and let's suppose that I am some omnipotent being, and I actually know that I went, you know, let's say that I went and measured every single SUV that has ever been made, and I know that the true mean, or that mu is right here. And I know that mu is actually equal to 19.5. Now, the researcher who went and did this doesn't know what the mean is. If he actually knew what the mean was, why would he be performing a confidence interval? He already knows where the true mean is. And remember that this is the whole purpose of doing a confidence interval is to try to figure out some range uh, where we think that the true mean might be residing. So <clears throat> when we do these confidence intervals, we're kind of like, it's similar to like throwing a hula hoop. And we're throwing this hula hoop, right? It's kind of got, got this, this range and we're trying to capture the true mean. We're trying to throw a net, and we're trying to capture out our true mean. So this confidence interval that I went and I did measured basically from here to here. So my net has captured the true mean. Now, I don't know, now the researcher doesn't know if he actually captured it. So what does this 95% confidence level actually mean? Well. It means that if we were to repeat this study over and over, if I were to collect you know, another sample of, I don't know, maybe this sample size is like n equals 50. So here I'd do another sample of 50. Well, I would be that what the confidence level is basically saying is that like 95% of the time, the confidence interval is going to capture the true population mean. Okay, but it also means that 5% of the time, or occasionally, let me switch out my color just so you can see, we're going to get a confidence interval that misses, notice that blue one does not capture this true population mean. All the other ones this kind of green line where mu is located is captured within these intervals. But this blue one misses it. And that's what the confidence interval kind of means with our confidence level. It means that whenever, whatever we set our confidence level to uh, is the percent of the time that we are going to capture the true population mean. And then occasionally we're going, we're going to miss it. That our confidence interval or our net, it will miss our true population mean. Now, you might argue, well, it's like, fine, let's just make our confidence level 100%. And if I make my confidence interval 100%, then I'm never going to miss it. And you're like, you're right, but there is a consequence if we do that. So if we were to make our confidence level like 100%, then our interval would go from, whoopsies, sorry, I'm not negative there would go from negative infinity to positive infinity. 
and that is not very useful for a confidence interval. We will be right, but it doesn't give us useful information. So like for example, let's say that we were talking about the weatherman instead. Um, if I wanted to be 100% confident about the temperature tomorrow, I'd say that it'd be somewhere between absolute zero and you know 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit. It, is that true? It's like, well, yeah, it's absolutely true. Does it tell you if you should wear a coat tomorrow or not? No, it's not very helpful there. So here, with the true mean miles per gallon of an SUV, I'd say, you know, if I wanted to be 100% confident that my confidence interval captures my true population mean, I'd say that it's somewhere between like zero miles per gallon and, you know, infinite miles per gallon. Am I right? I am right. Is it useful? No. No, it's not at all. All right, so kind of just remember conceptually that these comp when we do these confidence intervals, we're throwing out some sort of net, and the random part there is not the true mean. The true mean is fixed. It is where it is, and what we're not certain is whether or not our interval or if our net has captured it. The true population mean is not moving. That's a really important thing to remember because of how we need to talk about um, our confidence interval statements. It's very easy to get tripped up and start talking about the true mean as being random, where here the random thing really is our intervals. The intervals can move around because they're random. We, how we select our data, um, we select random variables or, or random samples. And because of that randomness in our samples, their confidence intervals change just a little bit each time. Okay, so let's put up an example of how we should actually write our confidence interval in this scenario. So we could say, so let me kind of put up a column of good ways to write or talk about confidence intervals. All right, so let's do our goods first. All right, so the most basic one that we use all the time is this guy, that we are 95% percent confident that the true mean miles per gallon for SUVs is somewhere between Uh, 18 and 20 miles per gallon. All right, this is our standard way that we talk about it, and this is a very good way. We are 95% confident that the true mean is somewhere between, we'll say that this was our 18 and 20. All right, so we're 95% confident that it was between those two. And that that's a good way to talk about it. We are not saying that the true mean is like moving or anything. We're 95% confident that the true mean is somewhere between this bound. All right, another good way to talk about it. Or, let's do a new color. We can do this. We can also say if we were to repeat this study. And what that means is that we keep the same sample size and we keep the same confidence level and we basically do the same sampling method. But if we were to repeat this study over and over, over the confidence interval, would capture the true mean MPG of SUVs. Uh, we'll do 95% of the time. Okay, so like I said, you know, if we were to repeat the study over and over and over again, 95% of the time we'd capture the true population mean, 
5% of the time we'd either miss it kind of above or below. All right, so that's another good way to talk about it. There's one other way that, that we can talk about this uh, that, that we are going to cover together. Um, there's actually some other ways we can do it too, but let's cover one more. And let's also say or. There is a 95% probability Um, that the next confidence interval will capture the true mean MPG of SUVs. Okay, there are three good ways to talk about this. Now here, we do say like there's a 95% probability or 95% chance, but what are we talking about? We're talking about that the confidence interval has some probability that it's gonna capture the true population mean, not that the true population mean is moving. All right, so these are three good ways to talk about, um, to talk about our confidence intervals, or ways that we can be discussing our confidence intervals. Typically in like our conclusions, we use this top method uh, to talk about our confidence intervals. Okay, so now that we've done that, let's talk about some bad ways. And I just wanna put these up so that you can see of some like pitfalls that people can fall in when we're talking about our confidence intervals. Okay, so let's do, yeah, let's get this green up here. We'll do bad. And let's do kind of a line down. All right, let's do bad. Okay. <clears throat> Here's a bad one. Let's start off with, yeah. 95% percent chance that the true population that, that the true mean MPG or SUV MPG is between Okay, I wanted to do this one first because it is very similar to this blue one. So the only thing really different here is that instead of using the word confident, we use the word chance. Now if you notice this, we say that there's a 95% chance that the true mean SUV and PG is between 18 and 20. We're saying that the chance or that the randomness is in this mean value. We don't want to say this. This isn't moving. Ran if something is random, it has to have the ability to move. A true population parameter doesn't move. It is fixed in place. Over here, we didn't say chance. We didn't say that it's random. We said we're just 95% confident that it's in between here. Uh, it might not be, though. And it's not that it has moved at all. It's that the confidence interval missed it. All right, it, I know that that's a, a difficult idea, but just remember that we have to make sure that how we're talking about this is not saying that the true mean could be moving around, but it's that our confidence interval may have missed it. Okay, so that, that's our first bad one. Here's another bad one. Um, okay, we could say that Ninety-five percent of the time, of the time, um, mu, or we'll say the true mean S U V M P G is between eighteen and twenty. 
Okay, so this one is very similar. It's just instead of saying like chance, we said 95% of the time. Uh, very similar, same problem as above. Let's do another one. Or we've got like 95% of all, um, oh, we'll say of all SUVs have MPG between eighteen and twenty. All right, the problem with this one is that we're trying to talk about like ninety-five percent of all of these SUVs have this MPG between, and so that's saying like all of the individual measurements are in between here, and that's not what we're saying. We're saying that the average that our sample averages are in between, are um, that the true population mean is between these guys. It has nothing to do with these like individual measurements. So this is this is a poor one, as well. Um, oh, and then this last one is another bad one. Or ninety-five percent chance that the next. SUV as an MPG between uh, let's see eighteen and twenty. Okay, remember our confidence intervals are talking about our interval like whether or not it's capturing our true population mean. This is saying that there's a 95% chance that the next SUV has an MPG between those two. And that, that's not what a confidence interval says. So over here, let's look at these good ones again. 95% confident that the true mean MPG of an SUV is somewhere between these two. The key difference here is that we're using this word confident, not chance. It's really important. It's the next one down. If we were to repeat this study and over and over and over again, We've got this 95% of the time we're capturing the true population mean. That's another good way to talk about this. Next one down, 95% probability that the next confidence interval, that random part, will capture the true population mean uh, MPG for the SCVs. Okay, probably is going to take a little bit of time looking at this, uh, but it's really important to distinguish how we can correctly talk about our confidence intervals. Uh, so if we want to have just kind of a generic way that, that we can kind of look at this, let me write that up over here. So and you can kind of, if you're confused about how to actually talk about these confidence intervals, we can use this next sentence that I'm putting up as kind of like a formula of how we can correctly talk about confidence intervals. All right, so here we can, here we go. We can say something like this. We are and we're going to say confidence level percent confident that the true, and then we're going to need some context here. So context, and that's going to be oh, like our measurement. and population. Okay, so that context of so the measurement of population. Back here, it was the, the measurement that I was interested in was MPG, miles per gallon, and the population was SUVs. So you just have to remember, so you know, if we're talking about, I don't know, like the true mean weight of Siberian Huskies, well, I just told you what it is, that 95% confident that the true uh, we're looking at like mean measurement, so this is going to be the weight and then the population of Siberian Huskies, something like that. Uh, we've got to make sure that we can get our context in. So we've got that the true, you know what, I put this in the wrong spot. Let's erase this out real quick. I like it, but it just needs to shift over one.
Okay, we need to say either this is going to be the mean or the proportion. And then we need context. Measurement. Population. And then we can say is somewhere between. And then we're going to do our lower bound comma upper bound. And that's how we can basically always write out our confidence interval statements. We can even use this for one tail or two tail statements. Um, where we can even say is somewhere between, and just if we're doing a one tail statement, the lower bound or the upper bound is probably either going to be this negative infinity or positive infinity, or if we're dealing with proportions, it'll be a zero or a one. Um, but this is kind of the formula of how to write a good confidence interval statement every time. We are 95% confident that the true, we'll look at this mean miles per gallon for SUVs is somewhere between 18 and 20. And that would be a good way to do it. Okay, so kind of a lot to cover, uh, but if we can follow this kind of format and just conceptually know what we're doing when we are performing these confidence intervals, we're going to have success in correctly um, incorrectly discussing and interpreting our confidence intervals.